Good evening. They are among the most vulnerable in society, people with mental health problems whose care is entrusted to professionals. But patients at a hospital near Bristol were let down, beaten, bullied and tormented by the very people supposed to care for them. Today, a care worker from the now notorious Winterbourne View Hospital admitted ill-treating patients. It brings to 11 the total number of staff who have now confessed to their appalling crimes. And it means for the first time we can tell you the full story of what happened. Well, our correspondent Rebecca Broxton has been following the story since it first emerged. That was more than a year ago. She's outside the former hospital in Hambrook in South Gloucestershire. Uh, Rebecca, this really is a shocking tale of the abuse of those least able to speak up for themselves. Absolutely. No one can fail to be horrified by what happened here behind closed doors. Tonight, as you can see, Winterbourne View Hospital has been closed and is boarded up after a television crew exposed the horrendous abuse of mental health patients here. I should warn you, you may find some of the images in this report distressing. It was these images that shocked and horrified a nation. So-called carers abusing, tormenting and bullying vulnerable patients. Just how many patients may have been abused is unclear. 29-year-old Terry Rooney was a patient at Winterbourne View Hospital for four years. Initially, he seemed happy, but his parents say that soon changed. Trembling all the time. I mean, that was constant, but I was blaming the, the medication. I mean, I kept on bringing the doctor up, you know, because the state he was in all the time, he was really scared, really scared. And he said, please don't let take me back there. Don't let them take me back. He actually wet the bed. That's how scared he was. He's also said he was thrown in the shower. That's all I got out of him. I didn't want to push it. Although they never witnessed their son being abused, the Rooneys say they were disturbed by how a female patient was treated in front of them. She said the F word and went outside. She said, I just want to be on my own. Next minute, sort of eight people dive on her. Hmm. I mean... <laughs> wouldn't you try coaxing first rather than full-on jumping on her and they held her down and made her take medication? The couple say if they'd realised the extent of the problem, they would have done all they could to remove Terry from risk. He was absolutely terrified. And we didn't, at the time, put two and two together. I wish we did. I would have kidnapped him and gone off somewhere. It's like he was because violated, really. All, you know, they were violated, really, all of them. You know, it's disgusting, really. You know. Their human rights, you know, what rights did they have? Terry is now at a new home, but his family will never forget what happened at Winterbourne View. And they forgive. You know, people like Terry forgive. But you can forgive people like that. No. It's disgusting, you know, just disgusting. What happened inside Winterbourne View was described by some as torture. Repeated warnings were ignored. But once the television documentary was screened, police began an investigation. Eventually, 11 were charged with ill-treating or neglecting patients. Wayne Rogers, Danny Brake, Alison Dove, Charlotte Cottrell, Graham Doyle, Holly Draper, Jason Gardner, Neil Ferguson, Kelvin Four, and Sukalingam Apu, all pleaded guilty. Michael Lesanegu had, until today, denied the charges he faced, but this morning entered guilty pleas to mistreating a patient. Steve Solar's son, Sam, was a patient at Winterbourne View for two years. Looking back, his father says there were warning signs something was wrong. He just looked dirty all the time. Um, he was more aggressive, there was no doubt about that. And he looked 
drugged up sometimes. He just he didn't seem himself. He'd come down and see us. He he didn't seem to be the Sam that we knew. He'd have marks on him, on his wrists or carpet burns on his legs, and we asked him, um, what's happened here? Um, he said, restraint. That's all he would say. Then came the documentary. And the feeling when I was watched that program that night, I can't express what was going through me. Um, rage, anger, um, it's just, it's hard, it's hard to explain. It affected Sam's younger sister too. I couldn't watch it all. I had to, I had to leave my house and I sort of went on one a bit because it just made, it made me feel sick, the fact that people could treat other people the way they did, knowing that they can sort of look after themselves as well as not normal people can, but like people without those conditions can. After the programme, Sam's family reviewed the reports they'd received from the hospital. He'd made a complaint that he'd been assaulted by a member of staff. Um, we didn't pick it up before. You feel a letdown as a parent because as a parent, you feel it's your responsibility to be there for your children all the time, to protect them, to make sure they're safe. And when you feel something like that hasn't happened, you feel bad in yourself. Yeah, you feel like you've let, your, you've let your kids down. Well, you can see there how distressed the families are by what happened here at Winterbourne View, and many of them may never know whether their loved ones were abused. Well, after court this morning, I spoke to Steve Solars, who you saw in my report there. He says he wants the care workers to face stiff sentences that you give them the maximum possible sentence there is that you can give. I mean, um, from what they've done, they, they do need severe punishment to, as a deterrent for other people to stop this. Don't let it happen again. So, Rebecca, when will those 11 care workers be sentenced? Well, sentencing has been adjourned. It's likely to take place in around three weeks' time. The Crown Prosecution Service told me this morning that they treated these as disability hate crimes, and they're urging the judge, too, to dish out harsh sentences. Disabled people can be victims of crime due to their perceived vulnerability, particularly where there is an unequal relationship, such as where the offender is the victim's carer. At Winterbourne View, people who should have been able to trust their carers had that trust cruelly and repeatedly abused. Sentencing, though, won't be the end of court proceedings. As I understand, at least 15 families are going to be taking civil action against the hospital's former owners, Castlebeck. And looking at your report there, Rebecca, if it hadn't been for that television programme, would this abuse have ever been uncovered and investigated? Well, I think if it hadn't been for the two nurses who went to Panorama with their concerns, no one may have known the true extent of what was going on here. In her first television interview, one of those nurses, Ashley Fox, says turning to the media was a last resort after managers and the Care Quality Commission ignored her concerns. Although I'd had eight years previous experience working in learning disabilities and mental health, I was still seen as a newly qualified nurse. My opinion almost did not matter. I was told that these patients needed um, so an, an approach that was firm and direct um, but I found that it was unnecessarily in, in many cases um, it, it was too aggressive um, and you were watching patients being antagonised um, as opposed to um, diffusing situations as they came up. After just three months at Winterbourne View Ashley Fox resigned. I felt powerless in that situation and it was soul destroying to leave um, because I got on so well with so many of the patients there and I felt as though I was letting them down. But after raising my concerns um, almost on a daily basis with, with management, whether it was on the phone or actually going downstairs and talking to them, um, I wasn't being listened to.
There was no response to her anonymous call to the Care Quality Commission. So, as a last resort, Ashley Fox and another nurse, Terry Bryan, told the undercover documentary team what was going on. But even they were shocked by the level of abuse caught on camera. I was horrified. I couldn't, I couldn't believe that this had been going on for so long without anyone speaking up about it. Um, when I was working at Winterbourne View, I never saw abuse to the extent that was caught on camera. Um, and that sickens me because, you know, it was, it was my role to protect these people. This was all going on right under our noses and we didn't know the extent. Deciding to blow the whistle wasn't easy. When I um, first spoke up about the abuse, I had people coming to me saying, oh, you know, you're so brave. But I didn't understand that because I, I was doing my job. And that's what I would expect anyone to do. I know that if it happened again tomorrow, I'd do exactly the same. Well, Ashley Fox told me she hopes the exposure of what happened here acts as a watershed in the treatment of mental health patients. And she hopes those people who can voice their concerns do, those, do so on behalf of others who can't speak up for themselves. So looking forward now, Rebecca, what lessons do you think have been learned from all this? Well, I think the regulator, the Care Quality Commission, had a big wake-up call after the broadcast of this documentary. They were severely criticised in the aftermath. Now, it's since undertaken a series of spot checks on care homes and hospitals across the country. And one of the whistleblowers, Terry Bryan, has now joined their inspection team. Now, tonight, the CQC issued a statement. In it, they say, we are committed to do all we can to protect vulnerable people and we apologise to patients at Winterbourne View and their families for our failure to do so quickly enough in this case. Following a thorough internal review, we have made changes to strengthen our processes and to ensure we are better placed to prevent abuse. Well, local authorities are now looking very closely at their safeguarding procedures. In fact, South Gloucestershire Council, which has jurisdiction over Winterbourne View, has uh, sacked two care managers in the light of what happened here. Tomorrow, a serious case review is published. Everybody will be looking at that very, very closely, and I'll bring you the details on that and its findings in the programme tomorrow night. OK, Rebecca Broxton at Hambrook in South Gloucestershire. Thank you very much indeed.